following up on what you were saying, Melanie, so you do believe that Charles was shot in self-defense, that Alex was defending himself? Absolutely. And I think um, Tylee was the biggest, I don't know, I went to her and I was just like, how are you? Um, and she, she was so brave about speaking about it. And I was like, wow. Like, and Tylee's very collected, very mature. I admire Tylee so much for how brave she was. And she explained everything as so did Lori and so did Alex. And it made sense with how Charles had been acting. And you know, you're in shock that, that it just went to that extreme. But I'm glad Alex was there to protect Tylee because that's the only, you know, Lori and Charles were arguing, but the only time Alex said, Hey, I want to get, I'm going to get involved in this is when, you know, he had a baseball bat and was, you know, I don't know. I, with, with Tylee, it was, I don't know if he was going to hit her. It sound, Tylee made it sound like he was, they were, he, he was probably going to hit her and kind of taking the bat away. And I hated that Tylee had to go through that. And, um, I know there's been a lot of criticism of how Lori acted afterwards and, you know, how she's smiling on camera. And I know Lori, and she, when she's uncomfortable, she kind of, yeah, we're in shock. She'll just kind of laugh or, or smile, try to make light of it. And I, I do the same thing. That's just a, something, how we handle being in shock. And every person handles being in shock differently. But that's when everything was kind of started to be uh, strange. Charles had... Uh, said all these things in court documents, things I had never heard Lori say. And that's when he started, um, that's when it kind of all these, you know, these strange ideas started get started flowing around. And our family, and I know Lori, um, Lori's always been an active member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. She loves learning and she spent a lot of time in the temple trying to learn and grow from experiences and try to feel peace from all the things that have happened in our life. And um, Charles, I feel like, took that to an extreme um, with the things that he said about her. Honestly, I, I see everything that Charles did, and it looks as if he was setting up. As soon as Lori caught on to what he had done, he like the emails about his life insurance, Charles sold life insurance and had his own company. I mean, the, the texts between people, it almost looked like a setup. It was very alarming to see all these things. Um, and, um, you know, I, I've been asked, well, you know, what spiritual experiences has Lori, ha has Lori had? And that's not for me to answer or to say what Lori and Chad's beliefs are. But I know what, I know the people they are, and I know they're good people, and they're, they're trying, and, you know, they're somebody that, so people as a family would get together and talk about, you know, the mysteries of God and the, these deep doctrine conversations and, Hey, what do you think about this? What about this idea? Or, Hey, this isn't a book. What do you think about this? And we're allowed to do that. We're allowed to discern truth from error and just learn. And in our church, we believe in revelation where we can, you know, it's a, it's an ongoing process and we're learning and continually everything's changing. And we're just people that are trying to um, grow in our faith and be closer to the savior and there's there's no cult if um i mean it's lori's my aunt zulema's almost like an aunt to me alex is an uncle and this is this is my family and we're you know just trying to learn about these things but the whole um fear i guess where it comes down to tylee and jj and this zombie idea came from a disturbing phone call i got from one of lori's old friends right after they took off to hawaii and, um, you know, telling me these things, you know, well, Lori, you know, Lori and Alex, I think did something to Tylee and JJ and we don't know where they're at. And Lori's lied to you and all these things that didn't feel right. Um, that phone call, I just felt a lot of fear and doubt. And that's when I kind of went into this worrying phase of, and I, I'm, you know, I'm newly married to Ian and I'm sharing these things with him and can't sleep at night some nights and I'm like I don't know where they're at I don't know what's going on and I don't understand these things um and Ian which I don't know is talking with uh Natalie and Brandon and they're telling him these terrifying things that aren't true that I've that I've plotted to kill Brandon and I'm in a cult and so I have no idea <laughs> that what Ian's doing behind the scenes and I'm I'm in a scared time in my life where I'm trying to figure out the pieces I'm trying to just even know what's going on with with Brandon and his plans and who he's working with and where my kids are and 
um, it was just a terror. December was terrifying. Like we're thrown into this boiling pot as soon as we get married and trying to just adapt the best we can. Melanie, did you actually believe these things that Lori and Chad had told you or were you telling Ian just to kind of get it off your chest and say, I don't know what to think? Lori and Chad did not tell me most of those things in the document. Those were fears I was hearing from other people and never did I believe them, but I feared because I, you know, when you don't have knowledge about something, you think, and you're in a scary situation like this, you think the worst. And I am, I'm, I'm an open book. I just kind of say it how it is. And I learned like, you know, I didn't know Ian was, you know, recording conversations and all these things. And I didn't know Ian was talking to Natalie or to Brandon. And I had told Ian, you know, the history with Brandon. And um, I, I, I warned him, I said, you know, if, you know, Natalie's probably going to try to get a hold of Brandon and Brandon's going to run with all these, these lies about me. And Ian knew they um, knew who I was, but he, the factor of Tylee and JJ going missing and he's never seen them before and had only met Chad and Lori one time. He doesn't know, you know, what I know about the past of Lori trying to do everything she can to protect her kids and people who have been threatening her and, you know, being married so quickly, I don't think I had caught up caught him up on all the family history and there was so much going on in our in my own um custody case with my children and we hadn't got to that so real quick we get married thrown into this boiler pod and we're doing the best we can and ian you know i know he acted in on fears and doubt rather than the things that he did know but i don't hold any blame towards him this was a terrifying time for us and i'm just continuously dumping on him what he you know what if this happened what if this happened if i i had my my dad sending me threatening messages saying things about the shooting and um that ran and Boudreaux's claiming and i never even know i still to this day don't know if this shooting actually happened or um who who did this um i i Do you don't think it was alex i the only time i thought it was alex was um i think the first initial fear of could Alex have done, done something like this was, um, I don't know where the first fear came in, but the first meeting with Detective Pillar, the day after the shooting, I, you know, I said, here's all the people Brandon associates with. If, and then he said, you know, do you have Alex and Lori's number? I said, yeah, here's her number. Do you think they have anything to do with it? But when I heard that, I kind of was like, okay, it sounds like Brandon's trying to set them up for something. And I know, I know they don't have anything to do but later on in December, um, you know, Alex passes away. And then on Christmas, I get a phone call from Brandon and he says, you know, if you want to talk to your kids, um, you know, I had to listen to him bullying me for an hour and threatening me and saying, you have to go to the FBI and say that, you know, Alex shot at me. And I said, I don't know that Brandon. And he's like, if you ever want to see your kids again, you have to go and tell them that. And I was you know, why, why, why did they never call Alex or say, hey, can you come in and meet with us? We have some questions for you. Um, but he, Brandon was so sure, but his story kept changing. So still to this day, I don't know what happened in this shooting. Um, he had my dad on board sending me text messages saying, Melanie, they're going to, sentencing is coming soon for you. They know it was Alex. They know it was, you know, this Jeep registered to Tylee. And like, I've been trying to put the pieces together of what's going on because I don't have the facts to that. but the the knowledge that i do have it's it doesn't add up to all these you know speculation and rumors that are flying around and still to this day i have not seen one shred of evidence about this shooting brandon's claiming that leads me to believe that it was alex cox do you uh believe that brandon has turned dark no and that's a you know in that document it um the terminology the way i understand this is in our faith, you have, you know, as you increase in um, becoming closer to your Savior and act on obedience and, and righteousness, you increase in light. And um, as you, you know, make bad decisions or, um, you know, invite evil things into your life, um, you're, you know, you're, you're less, you're losing that light of Christ. Um, you know, there's no, I can't tell. Um, you know, we talk about in our religion, the gift of spiritual discernment. Um, and I think you look at the fruits of people to, to know for yourself, Hey, is this a good person? I want to be having my life. Is this a bad person? And never is there ever any ill intent. If somebody is not making good choices in their life to do harm to them, pray for them. And he blessed those who persecute you and 
use you and that's how I view it. And I don't see um, children as being light or dark. We believe in um, the age of eight um, is the age of accountability when you're baptized. And, you know, from then on, you can make decisions in um, light or dark, if you will. And that's just the terminology I, I see that as. The way these things are worded, it sounds, it sounds terrifying. And they're, they're stemming from, from bits of truth, I guess, that, you know, we talk about in this um, in our religion, and um, that's kind of where that comes from. So in talking with you guys, you seem like mainstream Latter-day Saints. I think a lot of people would watch this and, and think they're mainstream, but the writings are, I mean, I, I've been a lifelong member, and I've never heard a lot of that stuff, and I think there are a lot of people that say, whoa, that's fringe. I also think Latter-day Saints are very uh, uncomfortable with the word cult, because sometimes we're, we're, say, we're in a cult. You said earlier, Melanie, that you're not in a cult, but, but we're, are you in a fringe group? Are you in a group that's not mainstream? We're Lori and Chad in a group that's not mainstream. Hang on one second. Can you hear me okay, Nate? Yeah, I got you. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm not in any cult and I don't believe any radical beliefs off of the, you know, I believe it. Can you still see us? You're there. Yeah, I got you. Okay. Um, I don't believe in anything that is against the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. There are, you know, topics where, you know, we don't have full understanding. Like you see in this document, um, it talks translation. We don't have information, a lot of that in our church. Um, it's something that's talked about in the scriptures, and these are things that, you know, are interesting, and you want to learn and know more about them. These are the mysteries of God that, you, you know, no one really has the real answers on, and um, these are things to learn about, but there's no beliefs that I have or that I know that Chad and Lori have that are against the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints or anything inconsistent with, with that faith. Um. One other question about the document, Ian, and then we can we can move on. You mentioned sure. in there that that you know your whole intent was not to smear anybody. You didn't want to smear anyone. Your intent was to protect your family and help solve the case of the missing kids. So, can sure. you guys address the public as to what you all are doing to help in the case? So, we uh, you know to the best of our knowledge and cooperated fully with with the FBI with law enforcement anytime they've had questions we've answered um, and you know that's all we can do right now we're trying to put you know some I guess trying to set people at ease a little bit you know right now the kids are missing we don't know where they are and there's so much speculation because of this information that's leaked um, you know and, and the accusations that Charles made in his in his divorce paperwork and people coming out of the woodwork to come after Chad or uh, come after Lori um, you know, there's a lot of speculation of what's happening, but so far, all we know is that they're missing. And I think, uh, you know, Janice put it, or sorry, uh, Lori's mom, Janice, she put it really well. The kids aren't, you know, the kids aren't missing to Lori. They're missing to the rest of us. And we don't know where. And while I would absolutely love to know where they are and just get this over with, move on with my life. Um, I have to, I have to try to have faith and believe that there's going to be a happy ending to this. I certainly hope there is because it's going to have a really negative effect on my life and on Melanie's life if there isn't. So you guys have talked with the police in Rexburg and, and the FBI and you, sure. every time they want to talk to you, you're open to talking with them and answering questions. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I had my first initial meeting with Detective Aramisio and then, um, I invited FBI into my home for a few hours and told them everything that I did know. And, and I didn't know um, Ian had been, did I know you were working with them at that point? My first um, meeting with FBI, I shared a lot of these things I'm sharing with you, Nate, and they were like, okay, this isn't where we thought this would, was going at all. We, we, we had heard all these things from Ian and from Natalie and from Brandon and, you know, from Kay, and it doesn't, you know, we haven't heard this other side of, you know, reason why, why would Lori be doing what she's doing? Why does she not feel safe to uh, say where her kids are? Or why does she feel the need to protect them? Um, I've heard, I've heard, I don't know if I've heard you guys, but a lot of people have said this is a lot of hype. 
granted the media has you know latched onto this story because it is two missing kids so the hype could die down if the kids were produced or if they you know if she said where the kids are why do you think she won't i don't have that answer but i know no one is listening to her side she's been what seems proven guilty before even given the chance to speak for herself and i know she hasn't come forward and said that and i absolutely would love that but she knows what she's doing, I believe, and she knows where the kids are. And I think, I, I can't remember the quote she said uh, very initially when um, things kind of took off, something about when all this speculation and rumor is over. Um, I believe when all the speculation and rumor is over and we're, um, we're looking at the real facts here, I believe you know, she has a story to tell and I, I know she doesn't have reason to trust trust a lot of people right now and you know I can't ask that question to her and she's you know in jail waiting her time to um, have her time to defend and, and tell her story and we why, just why that yet. Melanie why can't you ask her where the kids are she's in jail and everything's been recorded and as we um, heard earlier in her court case it sounds like her um, conversations even with her own lawyer have been recorded and then given to uh, Lieutenant Baller, the prosecutor over there, and um, I don't feel like that's a, um, I, I feel like that's a huge concern. I don't think if I asked her, she would tell me. I mean, she didn't tell me before, um, probably just to not involve me in whatever she's got going on. Um, and I, I just trusted, you know, she's, she's got a plan, and um, I just want to be love and support and do whatever I can. But when it comes down to it, every fear, every worry, every doubt that I had, it doesn't stick to the knowledge I do know of who Lori is and everything she's done to protect those kids. Those kids love their mom and you know, they don't want to be with Kay. Uh, JJ's never wanted to be with Kay. And um, I mean, I wish we could see the times Kate's actually come to try to be in JJ's life. And um, I mean, I was there in Arizona most of the time Lori and JJ were there after they adopted him. And I don't, I might've met Kay one time, but, uh, she wasn't a big part of JJ's life. And I just, I see her even just her aggression. And um, it's, it's not somebody who, um, it, you just, I see a lot of things behind the scenes that aren't being said. Um, and I don't know everything going on. I don't know where Lori would have the kids. But, Do you think they're uh, safe? I, I know Chad has said that they are safe and of course, we don't know what that means, but do you, do you think they're safe? Do you think they're in a bunker somewhere or? Yeah, Nate, let me, let me modify this just a little bit. Part of the premise of what our clients are saying, and, and of course includes Melanie and who are sitting here with us, but also Summer and Janice. The premise of it is, is first and foremost, they don't think they've ever seen anything in Lori's life that would give them any evidence that she could harm her children. And so that, that's base one. The next level is that they know that Lori had a basis um, and a belief that she needed to do take steps to protect her kids. Um, we don't have all the details about that, but she had expressed at least that much to them. They were moving out of the state of Arizona. They were going away. She had a reason for doing that. The, the third thing on this is that um, they had um, experienced in Lori's life this notion that she has a substantial distrust of the system because of its failure in her ability to protect her own kids. The system never was able to help her do that, the judicial system I'm speaking of. And so it, it's hard to go into Lori and say, well, just tell us where the kids are when it undermines everything that I just set forward. They don't think she did anything to the kids. They know she's got a basis for wanting to protect them. She knows, they know that she doesn't um, uh, trust the system. And so, to go in and ask her if she were to tell them where the kids are would undermine her ultimate purpose, which is to protect the kids. I don't think the question, I mean, everybody wants that question asked because they just want to see where the kids are. But that's not what Lori's goal is here. I think Lori's goal is, is to protect them. And, and, and saying where they are doesn't protect them in her mind. I think the bigger question we see, where are the kids, where are the kids? I think the bigger question is, why does Lori feel the need to protect her kids? And from who, from what? And until we know that question, she probably will not tell any of us that. And, you know, she's willing to sit in jail over keeping quiet and not sharing that information like this. 
Yeah. I saw a, a news clip from Kay where she said that she's never threatened Lori. And then at the end of the conversation, she said, yeah, I, I said, had some phone calls and emails where I said some pretty mean things, but, but really I just want to see the kids and or, or see JJ. And you, know, you, you can't have it both ways. Either you sent mean and, and, and nasty communications that, that caused Lori to be threatened or you didn't. And it sounds like she did. And Lori's saying she did. So, you know, we expect Kay's going to come forward and say more. Of, you know, I, I would never want to harm um, JJ. All I wanted to do was this. But in Lori's mind and in Lori's perspective, uh, she was under attack. And she felt that she had good reason to believe that and took the and was taking whatever steps she took in order to, to um, fulfill that goal. Melanie, when's the last time you spoke with her? Um, I had a phone call with her in, I want to say, the second week of December. It was... Or it was after Alex had passed, um, and that was right, right when I had just found out. It was the, I think it was the night Ian told me uh, that he had been going to the police and FBI, um, and I, I hadn't heard anything from them from then on out. So from December, mid December probably. And then she and Chad went moved to Hawaii, or they were already in Hawaii at that time. I'm. I would guess that they were already in Hawaii at that time because they left that last week in November. And then, um, you know, a couple of weeks later, I, um, you know, had, had a phone call with them. I didn't have their, their number and um, I think it was, that was the last time um, that, yeah, that I spoke with them. What do you want people to know about what you guys know, about any involvement, about your aunt, about the kids? What would be your final closing statement? Kids. Our, our biggest focus is we're working on our own custody cases right now that are affected by all this speculation and rumor. Um, it's deflecting from what our exes are doing um, and keeping our kids away from us unjustly. Um, and um, that's, our, that's our biggest focus. I think we're, we're running on faith and hope that, you know, Lori's, Lori's got a plan and she knows where JJ and Tylee are, but I don't know where my children are. And um, I'm having all these, having to spend all this time coming up and, um, you know, telling the truth because uh, everything's been manipulated and into lies in the media. People aren't seeing the whole picture of things. And this is a whole deflection on, um, you know, the, the truth. Everything that's being thrown around, all these ideas and people bouncing off each other and um, they're missing the main the, the truth here. And that's, I think, that's our ex's goal. Let's distract from everything they're doing and confuse it in this case um, and take advantage of it, which is, is sad. It's sad for our children. Um, we pray for them every day, and we know we're going to be with them soon. And, you know, maybe they'll, maybe they'll see us on TV, maybe not, but we, we know that they know who we are. And we just we patiently await every day until we're reunited with them. Ian, is there anything you want to add? I just kind of basically echo what Melanie said. You know, we, we've got you. Her ex-husband and my ex-wife were, you know, right now taking advantage of this case and going ham with it to keep our children away from us. Um, when, you know, they're, they're making all sorts of claims and where they know, Melanie, she was, she, she was the primary caretaker of her four kids for 10 years. Never did anything at all to harm them. Um, was a loving mother. And for some reason, all of a sudden, you know, now Brandon's trying to take them away. You know, the same thing with my ex-wife. I, I took good care of my kids, and and I loved them, and they loved being with me. They loved being with Melody. You know, we had them through, you know, all, almost entirely through the month of January. I think there was one week when we didn't have the kids almost, you know, sole custody, essentially, even though our our, our custody agreement was, you know, Natalie essentially had primary custody. She just kind of gave them to me and said, I can't handle this right now. Um, didn't have any problems with Melanie or me being around the kids at that point, but now that's a problem. Um, so that, you know, it's, this whole case is, it's being used against us to keep our children away. Our exes are frustrated with, you know, things kind of blew up when she and I got married. They, they both kind of became very upset. And it's just, it's, it's frustrating to have this case continue. You know, that we have, we had a preliminary hearing scheduled for, I think the seventh and the eighth, and now it's been pushed out to July. And until things get resolved, it's going to continue to affect us. We're just ready for it to be done. It's been a huge stall, Nate. And, you know, with, you know, Unfortunately, COVID's been pushing things back, but the most disappointing thing was when we had a family custody hearing finally for this, the Boudreaux case with our children, 
Brandon didn't show up. I don't know where he was. And later on, seeing him on TV, a few days later, front row at Lori's hearing, waiting to, you know, see if they can keep her in jail longer and um, not reduce her bail. That's upsetting. Why, where were my kids during then? And why, why is he leaving them? Um, and why, why are they not the focus here of, of his life? Um, and it's sad to see that. And tomorrow's Mother's Day. And I just, I have every plea in my heart that Brandon will have any kindness in his heart to reunite me with, with my children and let them talk to their mother. They're scared. They don't, I don't know what they've been told, but I know they know in their hearts who I am. I've, I've done everything for them and my whole life put everything, every ounce into them. And I'm so grateful I've done that because every day without them is just, it's, it's unbearable. Um, and I know everything's going to come forward eventually. And as we just keep trying to tell the truth and be ourselves and try to do the right thing, I know things are going to work out. I just want to thank you for being open-minded and for wanting to share both sides and not being afraid to share truth. They know there's so much confusion out there. And this is, this is what we want. We just want everything to be heard. And I think everything will eventually unravel as we, we see it continuing to move forward. Um, you asked if anything, I appreciate you being willing to clarify anything that um, has been reported wrong because we see it reported wrong every day in all these different news sources. And I desperately just want to call each one and help and say, hey, you got this wrong. I short, these are the facts. And um, I remember uh, you saying, uh, you know, how Brandon Boudreaux has claimed that I have a million dollars of reasons to shoot at him or kill him or money for a cult. And I know you're just reporting what you hear and, uh, you know, what's given to you. And I appreciate you giving us the time to respond to these, these false claims and um, accusations. And um, we're always happy to answer and clear up questions. And uh, just thank you for hearing us.